welcome back, everybody. Today, I just wanted to quickly go through this ABC segment that I saw today because it's just so full of lies and misinformation and lots of claims that never get backed up with any sort of evidence, just these sort of broad claims that they throw out there that are part of the narrative and never really get questioned. So I'm going to go through these segments and try to correct some of the lies and add context to these claims, these broad claims that they make over and over, you know, hoping that just repeating it over and over will make it true because they never actually have any evidence to back any of this stuff up. But it's gone far beyond just media bias at this point. And now they're literally just inciting half the country to violence and justifying it with these broad claims that they make that really, you know, aren't backed up by the stats or the facts. So let's just get started here. And when your president can't say Black Lives Matter, when the entire country is saying Black Lives Matter, when he speaks for 76 minutes and does not invoke the name of the young man who was murdered, but then talks about the quote unquote violence that's happening as a result of that. Okay, so first off, this is Yvette Simpson. She's supposedly a political journalist over at ABC News, but sounding a lot more like a political propagandist for the DNC. She's worth one to $5 million. Okay, she's not filthy rich, but she's definitely doing well for herself in this supposedly racist country that's oppressing her every day of her life. And not only is this woman a millionaire, but her voice is elevated above most in this country. So she's got a lot of power and influence as well. I'm going to get right back to tearing apart this segment, but first let me take a quick capitalism break to thank this episode's sponsor, Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. Collagen makes your skin healthy and gives you a youthful look. It strengthens nails, hair, teeth, and gut health, maintains muscle, improves joints, and so much more. Get yourself a bag of Ageless Multi Collagen. I highly recommend it. As an added bonus, if you order today, they'll give you free shipping, free VIP live health and fitness coaching for life, and a free e-report on the 14 foods for amazing skin. If you order today, you can save up to 51% off Ageless Multi Collagen. And rest assured knowing this company offers a 60-day money-back guarantee, even on empty bags. Go to www.healthwithdronetech.com and order today. Or click the link in the description or pinned comment. Next, I'm so tired of hearing about honest conversations from these people. They don't want conversations, much less honest ones. So right off the bat, she's lying, claiming that Trump won't say Black Lives Matter, which is not true. Uh, Camilla Harris actually made this exact same claim and was never fact-checked on it, of course. And Joe speaks the words and actually knows how to say the words, Black Lives Matter. Contrary to what the President of the United States, the current President of the United States does, which is to sow hate and division full-time and has never spoken those words and will never speak the words, Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter, nobody's done better for our black community that means so the phrase black lives matter is obviously fine the vast majority of people in the world uh, in this country definitely agree with that most people think that all human life matters that's why this wasn't breaking news for anybody like most people understand that human life matters which includes black lives but as we all know there's a big difference between the phrase and the organization the phrase is benign and it's true nobody disagrees with it but the organization on the other hand is a far left extremist uh self-labeled marxist organization this is like some neo-nazis getting together and starting an organization called the good guys then getting on tv and demonizing anybody who doesn't want to join up with the good guys. I'm not a Marxist communist. I don't agree with dismantling the country, its history, or the nuclear family. I don't agree with making demands and threats of violence if those demands aren't met. I don't agree with blocking traffic and intimidating drivers, keeping them from their right to travel on their way, which is just the height of irony to me. What right do these people have to stand in the road and keep people from going where they want to go? And it's not even like they just stand there. They actively intimidate the drivers and try to exert their authority, their non-existent authority on them. This lady wants you thinking that the phrase and the organization are one and the same, which is why you can't trust anything that you hear from these people. When he speaks for 76 minutes and does not invoke the name of the young man 
who was murdered, but then talks about the quote unquote violence that's happening as a result of that. Lastly here, she says that Trump won't say the name of the young man who was murdered. Who is she talking about? Because if she's talking about Jacob Blake, he's not dead. And this is concerning to me because over and over now, I've seen people in the media claim that this guy is dead. But she went even further than that. She said he was murdered. I mean, we don't know all the facts of this right now. All we have is a video that I have to say doesn't look very good for Jacob Blake. But she's proclaiming that he was murdered. That's highly irresponsible, especially for somebody who's supposed to be a professional journalist. That you just mentioned in the backdrop, Jacob Blake just died when this march was already planned. So to keep saying, leave it to Congress, that's not working. To say, just vote, that's not working because black people are still getting killed every week. <laughs> okay, wow, there was a lot, uh, there was a lot wrong in that. So you might have noticed he said that he, Jacob Blake was dead. So that's twice within the same uh, programming that they claim this guy's dead. And I've heard it uh, on other broadcasts, and I've been reading it over and over on Twitter from news organizations and pundits. And, of course, just the people that follow them, just random people out there saying, Jacob, but where are they getting this? They're getting it because the news keeps telling them that this guy is dead. I just did a video the other day about somebody on PBS making the exact same claim and, of course, not being fact-checked on it. And this really gets to my point and why I'm angry about what I'm constantly hearing from these people in the media because so much of this rhetoric uh, surrounding BLM and so-called racial justice, whatever that is, it's all based on misinformation and, yes, conspiracy theories. And many times they're pointing to these alleged victims, uh, and, and these are their martyrs, people like Trevon Martin, who they claim is a victim, despite the fact he was the attacker. He's the guy that attacked somebody else and then got shot. Uh, a jury felt the exact same way. Or they point to Breonna Taylor, but it's not that cut and dry. They say, Brianna Taylor, say her name. You know, like she's this hallowed victim. But it's not that cut and dry. She was involved in selling drugs, okay? Which is why the warrant was for her address. Because a drug dealer was showing up to her house to either, you know, to either unload the drugs or unload the money. And that's why the police got the warrant. But when the police showed up there and started banging on the door, the boyfriend uh, got up and as soon as they got through the door, he shot at him. And so that's what led to the to the firefight. It had nothing to do, you know, with skin color or race or any of that. It's literally the cops busted in, he shot at them, they shot back. So again, this is it's like there's so much misinformation floating around about that. Sure, uh there may be an argument for why no knock warrants are, are bad, even though they did knock and they did <laughs> they did announce themselves in this case. But there are lots of cases like this where innocent people get killed on these no knock warrants. There was two white people killed in Houston uh, over a, a, a false no-knock warrant that two black police officers lied to get, and then it resulted in two white people dead. And so white people. Did you ever even hear about that? No, nobody has. Because if they did talk about that, then again, their narrative would shatter. They point to Michael Brown, and they scream, hands up, don't shoot, which never happened. I mean, it's literally a conspiracy theory that was popularized by left-wing media. When you look at these police shootings, it's incredibly rare that you find a genuine example of murder motivated by racism or murder or murder motivated by racism. It's so incredibly rare. You got to keep in mind, there are six over 600,000 cops in this country that have millions and millions of interactions with people every year. If this were some really widespread thing, you would literally be seeing it every day. Now, you're going to hear people in the media say that it's happening every day, It's which is obviously hyperbole. It, it, it's a lie. It's not happening every day. I mean, if you want to talk about black lives uh, being lost every day, it's happening in these Democrat-run cities, and it's usually related to gang warfare, and you really don't hear much about it. I mean, we hear about it in Chicago from time to time, you know, how many people were shot over the weekend. But it, it really it goes on all over the country, along the coastal cities, and this gang warfare every day. It's been going on since the 80s. So when this supposed journalist says that black people are being killed every week and he is claiming that white people and police are gunning down black people every day, it's a lie. It's not true. The vast, vast, vast majority of black people killed every week, which does happen, are killed by other black people. It's that gang violence I was just talking about. And guess what? White people are killed every week too. Uh, Asian people are killed every week. Uh, Hispanic people are killed every week. That's just such a broad, generalized statement. Do you see what I'm talking about? Like, you can almost say he's not lying because generalized, yeah, 
black people are killed every week. But it's like if you came at him about that, he'd say, well, that's true. They are. Oh, but you're talking about white people and cops. Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't say it was white people and cops. See, they make these statements that the people watching may infer something uh, that, you know, he didn't actually say. But my point is, is that all of this rhetoric is not really backed up by the facts. And it's dangerous. It's what's driving this violence right now. All these people who think that they're justified uh, in it. And I, I hate to always, you know, say, I told you so. But I've said for years now, going back years, that you got to watch the left specifically because I see this over and over this just increasingly ratcheted up rationalizations for increasingly extremist uh, actions it's like they say the president is an existential threat well <laughs> if you really believe that well then there's a lot you can justify to yourself doing uh, pretty extreme stuff I mean you can bomb the White House and be like oh he's an existential threat I'm protecting the country so you see what I mean? The media is just being very irresponsible with this rhetoric, and they're playing very fast and loose with the facts. That's all I have for today. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so on one of the platforms listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.